John Keeley with the NEI Media Team at NEA 2012 in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today we are joined by Carol Berrigan, NEI's Senior Director for Supplier and Workforce Policy, and Susan Windsor, President of Aiken Technical College. And today we want to discuss what we think is a very exciting initiative in the nuclear industry today, and that is the development of the next generation of, of workers in our industry. Carol, let me start with you. Can you give us a, a sense of what the Uniform Curriculum Program is, what it's all about, who uh, among young people today, students, should be taking a look at it and potentially excited by it? Certainly. Several years ago, the nuclear industry recognized that it was going to need quite a significant number of workers to fill positions in radiation protection, in operations and in maintenance at the 104 operating nuclear plants and any new plants that would be constructed in the future. To uh, address this challenge, the industry came together and standardized a curriculum that is now deployed at 38 community colleges across the country, with nearly 900 students enrolled at these 38 institutions. It's a great opportunity for students who are interested in careers in the nuclear industry to get the training that they'll need that meets their recognized industry credential for their future. Hey, Carol, we're not just talking about nuclear engineering jobs, are we? What's the no. scope or the breadth of the careers we're talking about? The, the kinds of careers we're talking about, as opposed to nuclear engineering uh, degree positions, are positions that deal with operating a nuclear power plant safety, safely ensuring that workers at the plant are safe, those are radiation protection technicians, and a number of different maintenance categories, such as mechanical maintenance, electrical maintenance, and instrumentation and control. This year, we're also very excited to be working with Aiken Tech on a new quality assurance and quality control technician program that will also help the industry with its need for qualified workers. If you're the parents of students that maybe should be taking a look at this program, what should, you, what should be exciting to you, particularly as you look at a really tough economy? Uh, talk a little bit about maybe the salaries that are involved in these positions. Certainly. The nuclear industry continues to hire even in this economic downturn. When we look at operations, the median income for an operator at a nuclear power plant is just over $70,000 a year. For maintenance personnel, the average income is between sixty-six dollars and $73,000 a year. And for someone in radiation protection, it is just under $70,000 a year. In many communities, these are excellent salaries, and they don't require a four-year degree. An associate's degree is often sufficient to qualify for these positions. Uh, President Windsor, your institution and the, the region in which it's located is very, very unique because we're actually building new right. nuclear plants here in the United States That's in right. that region. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the excitement you're hearing from the students at, uh, in your community and the community itself and its uh, being invested in this program. Well, the community recognized uh, several years ago that uh, we were pretty much in the center of everything nuclear happening. Uh, and it included both Department of Energy and the utility uh, sector of the industry. So with New facilities being built at Savannah Riverside and just literally a stone's throw away at Plant Vogel and BC Summer. There literally were thousands of jobs that were going to be available in our immediate region. We saw this as a great opportunity, but only if we as leaders grasp that moment. And what I mean by that is that we knew very well that these employers were going to find the workers they needed somewhere. We wanted to be our citizens because if we did not do something together to address that, they would be imported and our own citizens would be disenfranchised from those good paying jobs. We didn't want that to happen. Not only that, but we felt very strongly because of the strong tradition of the Department of Energy in the community that safety was a very important thing on the minds of our community. We had great faith in our neighbors who worked at the Savannah Riverside. They had raised their families in the community, there were multiple generations of those families now since 1950 located in that Aiken, uh, Augusta area. And we wanted to make sure that tradition of local citizens coming and raising their families and having that same safety culture relative to future DOE facilities and the utilities that were being constructed locally uh, was very important to us as a community member. So uh, that was our philosophy going forward in the Nuclear Workforce Initiative. 
President Windsor, uh, you've brought to the assembly this year some very interesting profiles of the students at your mm -hmm. school who are taking a good, hard, long, hard look at this. Tell us a little bit about their backgrounds. What is amazing about students entering into the nuclear field, and particularly the Radiation Protection Program, which now uh, has been in existence for four years, is we find that there is a very broad background of students attracted to this field. And I'll just give you uh, a couple scenarios. We have uh, one student who had a four-year degree uh, and found that he could not make a livable wage to raise his family. He returned to Aiken Technical College, completed the radiation protection program, and now is working with VC Summer. Uh, but we also obviously have the Department of Energy site. We had a young lady who was just recently married, concerned about whether uh, their family would have adequate income. She came back uh, as well, completed the program, and is now working with one of the contra contractors at the Savannah River site. But one of the more intriguing stories, and sometimes an area that is neglected in the nuclear field, although it's not a utility, is nuclear medicine. Uh, we have a large research hospital uh, right across the river in Augusta, and nuclear medicine is an emerging field, and so is nuclear pharmaceutical. We had an individual who had been in the healthcare field, decided that they wanted to do something different, exciting, came back to our program, graduated, and is now being is now employed by a radio pharmaceutical company and is being trained as their uh, safety manager for that corporation. So uh, we have a tagline at our college that says, start here, succeed anywhere, and truly the radiation protection program has shown that to be the case. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking some time out from the assembly and, and bringing us this important information. Mm -hmm. Carol, if we can wrap up, uh, if people are visiting NEI's website, is there information there where they can find out more about this program? Yes, there is. If you look at www.nei.org and click on Careers in Education, there are a host of resources there to help with identifying the kinds of jobs in the industry and where you can study at different community colleges and universities to qualify for those positions. Thanks again to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap.